Imam Hussein looks to the right and looks to the left. He looks behind him and in front of him. Imagine the scenes as your Imam stands alone in his campsite. No others remain beside him as if he would enter each tent calling out. Wa Abbasa ya wa akbara wa qasima ya hon ya muhammad as if he would enter the tent of the companion saying ya john ya abish ya habib ya muslim can any of you hear me do any of you remain with me He looked and saw his family members and companions slaughtered on the ground. Their bodies lay lifeless behind the tents. His friends, children, nephews, everyone. He heard the wailing of the orphans and the cry of the children as loud as he could he called out is there anyone who defends the sanctity of the messenger of Allah is there anyone who believes in the unity of Allah and who fears Allah in our regard? Is there anyone who comes to our rescue and who wishes by doing so to please Allah? Yeah. There was a deafening silence and the Imam calls out هل من ناصرين ينصرنا Alas, no one replies, no one was heard, and no one left to aid the Imam. Imam al Hussein standing there alone. The women's voices now grew even louder as they cried. Imam al Sajjad in his ill state stood up. He was leaning on a cane and dragging a sword behind him. He was so sick and could hardly move. But upon hearing his father's plea, he couldn't remain still. And Hussein called on his daughter Umm Kalthum saying confine him so that the world may not run out of the progeny of Muhammad so she took him back to his tent and towards his bed Imam al Hussein now began bidding everyone the final goodbye. Imam Al Hussein was wearing a dark silk jubba and a turban with two tresses let loose by the sides and wrapped himself with the gown of the Messenger of Allah. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his holy progeny. Used to wear and was carrying the Prophet's sword. 
He prepared himself for entering into the battlefield, wrapping his body in old clothes under his army, as under his armor, as he knew that the enemy of Allah would not spare his dignity. He then ordered his infant son Abd Allah al to be brought to him. Wa that he could say his goodbye to this infant child. How does a father bid farewell to such a tiny baby? Zainab returned to her brother carrying his baby son Abdullah. And with her came the mother of Ali al Azgar Rabab. He placed him, the small child, in his lap. And he kept kissing and repeating this statement Away with these people when your grandfather, yeah, the chosen one, is their opponent. He must have seen the dry lips on Ali al Azrayar and the paleness, the paleness of that dying child. And he he could not take it anymore. <laughs> the baby cried and screamed. He then lifted the baby up and carried him out of the tents towards the enemy forces. You all know the tragedies that we are going to narrate. Ya all of you have seen a child of your own A nephew or a niece, a family member or newborn Think of how delicate they are Think of how protective the parents are over their child's safety Ailil Azgar by the age of six months How did Hussein feel seeing his child suffer so much he spoke to the enemy forces and asked them to provide the young child with some water to quench his thirst this young child, innocent, he had done no harm unto them, but yet he lay there, dying of thirst and hungry, his mother unable to provide him any milk. Imam al Hussein's hope for some mercy for his infant child from the enemy forces. He called out, O oh people, you have killed my brothers, companions and family. And now only this small child remains. Has he done anything to deserve this? So go and feed him some water. Now the enemies of Allah were divided into I've called out to give the child some water whereby the other half were worse than animals saying everyone from this family needs to be killed how could anybody look onto this dying child and cry out to let them die what kind of people had the Ummah of the Prophet turned to just a few years after his passing 
and now this how they treated his progeny whom he had spoken so dearly about and now the la'in Umar ibn Sa'd he looks and turns towards Harmala he says what do you want me to do Umar ibn Sa'd says to Harmala curse upon you stop this arguing between the army and these disagreements among our men Harmala says what do you want me to do Umar al says you must kill the baby Harmala says he puts an arrow into the bow but not just any arrow an arrow which is used to kill animals he narrates himself I waited for a spot to appear for me to hit the child with the arrow and then a breeze came and uncovered the neck of the infant child whilst he was in the arms of his father I aim my arrow at the spot of his neck it was shining so bright I shot the arrow and hit the baby the arrow goes from one side of the neck into the other decreases my affliction he says is the fact that it is witnessed by Allah the Almighty oh Allah it is not less in your esteem than the life of a son Lord if you have kept victory away from us then let it be for something even better and seek revenge on our behalf from the oppressors and let what has happened to us in this life be a treasure for us in the hereafter oh Allah you are the witness against the people who killed the one who looks like your messenger Muhammad peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny he then heard a voice saying from the heavens leave him alone O Hussein for there is a nurse waiting for him in paradise 
Now what does Hussein do? How can he take the baby back to his mother? Difficult it is enough. Difficult it is enough for Ali Al Akbar's body to be returned back to the camp. But how does he return a baby back to its cradle with a hole through its neck? How does he explain to this mother what has befallen to her son? And then he walks back towards the tent and sees Sakina. She says to her father, Oh, Father Hussein, did you bring us some water after you fed my brother Abdullah? What does Hussein reply to his darling daughter? He says, Oh, daughter, take your brother's body. He is slaughtered from one side to the other. She saw her body and she crawled out. She said, Wa Abdullah, Wa Akha. His mother came out running and she just saw the state of her son. She cried out, Wa Walada, Wa Abdullah. The women surrounded him and cried out, Wa Muhammad, Wa Ali. Look at what we have seen from the enemies of your Ummah. And then the mother of all, Fatima to Zahra, as if she would say, seeing all these tragedies of her children from the skies. If I thought Hussein would be left stranded, and would be left thirsty by the banks of Horat. I would have slapped myself upon my cheeks and tears of blood would flow down my face. Not enough that the forefathers of these creatures caused her to have a miscarriage in her final days. But now Fatima looks down from the heavens and sees another infant's life taken prematurely. I ask on the day of judgment, will she not appear out and complain to Allah? And her father carrying in one hand her darling Muhsin and in the other arm Abdullah Radhi. How will they face Rasulullah on that day? But I ask you, how did Zainab bear to see all this pain? After seeing her mother's grief after the loss of her Muhsin And now she must be the rock and support for a bomb after losing Abdullah An empty cradle rocked in the desert night Cries can be heard but now the roles have reversed Now the mother's cries and is hushed to sleep a silent child slaughtered worse than sheep oh, 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 oh.